As one of the most decorated and accomplished college football programs in the past decade and a half, the Miami Hurricanes approached the 1996 season with a unified goal to reaffirm their position as one of the elite teams of college football. In the past 14 seasons, Miami has played for the national championship in a January bowl game more often than not. Of their eight national title contests, the Hurricanes have captured four championships. And over the past decade, Miami has won 87% of its games, a higher percentage than any other Division I program in the nation. So in 1996, the challenge to the Canes coaches and players was a tall one, to live up to the tradition that is UM football. And in a season that saw the Hurricanes achieve their first top 10 ranking since 1994 and record their first bowl victory since their national championship season of 1991, the 1996 Miami Hurricanes certainly stepped up to the challenge. The Hurricanes dedicated their 1996 campaign not only to continuing their tradition of football dominance. Each Miami player wore the initials MB and RW on their helmets in honor of late teammates Marlon Barnes and Robert Woodis, each of whom had suffered untimely deaths in the offseason. In the season opener in the Liberty Bowl against the Memphis Tigers, Miami led just 3-0 before taking control in the third quarter. This blocked punt by Booker Pickett set up a one-yard touchdown by quarterback Ryan Clemens. Then, sophomore Magic Benton added to the special teams highlights for the day. That 67-yard punt return gave Miami a 17-0 lead. And in the fourth quarter, Benton connected with Clement to seal the win. Magic totaled nine receptions for 147 yards. And along with Dyrell McMillan's 119 yards rushing on 24 carries and Andy Crossland's three field goals, the Hurricanes caged the Tigers 30 to seven. Over Miami's first four games, the offense averaged 40 points, while the Canes D gave up just 13 points total over the 16 quarters. After beating the Citadel 52 to six, Rutgers 33 nothing and Pittsburgh 45 nothing, the Hurricanes climbed to number six in the national rankings. Over the course of the season, the Miami offense was led by quarterback Ryan Clement. The junior, who completed more than 60% of his passes in 1996, threw for 2,257 yards and 19 touchdowns against just eight interceptions. Clement is already leaving his mark on the UM record book, ranking ninth on the all-time pass completions list, ninth in passing yardage, and eighth in touchdown passes, while completing more than 62% of his career passes. Miami's depth at the quarterback position is legendary, and sophomore signal caller Scott Covington continues that tradition. Covington's strong arm produced big plays for the Canes as he completed 58% of his passes for 919 yards and four touchdowns in 1996. These two quarterbacks had an array of talent to complement them at the wide receiver position, despite the loss of two projected starters prior to the season. Even though he missed three games, Yatil Green's 44 catches for 746 yards led Miami in both categories. Explosive senior Tony Gator turned 30 receptions into 671 yards and led the Canes with seven touchdown receptions and an average of more than 22 yards a catch. 
Senior wideout Jermaine Chambers started seven games and contributed 14 catches for 188 yards and a score. Explosive sophomore Magic Benton opened the season with three consecutive 100-yard receiving games. And a former walk-on, receiver Andy Atrio earned a scholarship for his senior season. At the tight end position, the Hurricanes exhibited not one, not two, but three quality players at the position. Senior Gerard Daphnis led Miami tight ends in catches with 19 and in yardage with 173. Mondrell Fulcher gained some valuable experience as the athletic, explosive freshman caught 12 passes for 149 yards and two scores. And one-third of junior starter Chris Jones's 12 receptions resulted in a touchdown. Senior tailback Danielle Ferguson, one of only two players to rush for more than 1,000 yards in a season in Miami history, and UM's second leading all-time rusher, would have made a major run on the UM record books if he was not limited to just five games because of a hip injury. However, the future of the hurricane running attack looks bright with junior Trent Jones, sophomore Dyrell McMillan, and freshman Edgerin James. Trent Jones led hurricane rushers with five touchdowns and in receptions with 17 catches, while being the only tailback to see action in all 12 games. Dyrell McMillan spearheaded the UM running attack by averaging more than five yards on each of his 111 carries while scoring four times. And Edger and James established a new rushing record for true freshmen in just seven games by rushing 71 times for 446 yards, averaging over six yards a carry. Fullbacks Nick Williams and Carlo Joseph kept opposing defenses honest, each averaging nearly four yards a carry with one touchdown, while opening gaping holes for the UM rushing attack. The running game was anchored by Miami's offensive line. This unit was led by All-American center K.C. Jones. The senior from Midland, Texas, was also named an All-Big East selection, as well as a semifinalist for the Outland Trophy and Lombardi Award. Jones, the emotional leader of this group of Hurricanes, is widely considered the finest offensive lineman in Hurricane history. Joining Jones on the All-Big East team was fellow senior Jay Ina, a fixture at the right tackle position. Other starters included juniors Mike Wayner and Curlin Blaze, and sophomore Richard Mercier. Senior Ricky Perry was among those providing depth to the Canes O-line that was a key ingredient in an offense that put together 24 scoring drives of more than 70 yards, as well as producing touchdowns on eight of their 12 opening drives, while averaging more than 30 points a game in 1996. After cruising through the early part of the schedule, sixth-ranked Miami was forced to battle back from a 17-0 deficit in their annual showdown with the second-ranked Florida State Seminoles. Ryan Clements' 267 yards passing and two touchdowns to Yatil Green, who finished the game with eight receptions for 157 yards, brought the Kings to within 20-16 at the half. But UM could get no closer in their first Orange Bowl loss in 12 seasons to their arch rivals. The next week, the Hurricanes marched right down the field on their opening possession for a touchdown. But Miami could not overcome injury and illness to Clement and Covington and six turnovers in an upset loss to East Carolina. The Hurricanes' season hung in the balance the next week before a national television audience and nearly 67,000 crazed fans in Mountaineer Stadium as Miami limped into Morgantown to take on 11th-ranked 7-0 West Virginia. The Hurricane defense did its part by allowing only 241 yards of Mountaineer offense, with cornerback Earl Little registering 14 tackles and defensive end Kenny Holmes adding five tackles and three sacks. With Covington unavailable, Miami signal caller Ryan Clement turned in a heroic performance, playing with a separated left shoulder. But West Virginia's defense was equal to the task. Late in the fourth quarter, the Canes found themselves on the short end of a 7-3 score, with no timeouts and seemingly no chance of victory, as West Virginia lined up to punt from its own 30-yard line with 26 seconds left. But then, lightning struck in the form of special team sensation Tremaine Mack. Snap is good. It's blocked! Miami got it, and they'll have the football inside, the, and they're going to score! It looks like 
Nate Brooks has the football, and it's a touchdown for the Hurricanes. Tremaine Mack comes in from up top, blocks the punt. What a play by the University of Miami special teams. They blocked the punt with 21 seconds left to go. In a dramatic turn of events, after Mack blocked Brian West's punt, senior safety Jack Hallman recovered, and as he was being tackled, handed the ball to Nate Brooks, who raced untouched into the end zone for an improbable 10-7 Miami win. Miami was now breathing new life into its season with a 5-2 overall record and a 3-0 Big East mark. West Virginia was triggered by UM's defense and special teams. Miami has long epitomized the fact that championships are won on defense, and the 1996 Canes have continued the tradition of outstanding D. The Hurricanes, ranked 12th nationally in total defense, went more than 14 quarters early this season without allowing a touchdown. Miami also became the first team to record back-to-back -back shutouts in Big East Conference play and might have made it three in a row had not a turnover given West Virginia a first and goal at the UM three-yard line, leading to its only score. Defensive end tandem of Kenny Holmes and Kennard Lang accounted for 23 of the 34 sacks registered by the Miami defense in 1996. Holmes, an all Big East first team selection, had 11 sacks while recording 65 tackles and two fumble recoveries. All Big East second team selection, Kennard Lang, led Miami with 12 sacks while contributing 72 tackles. Both Holmes and Lang rank in the top five in UM's all-time single-season sack chart. Senior Booker Pickett was an integral part of the rotation at the end position. The Hurricanes' interior defensive line was anchored by sophomores Chad Pegues and Michael Lawson, junior Denny Fortney, and senior Marvin Davis. This quartet combined for 151 total tackles and four and a half sacks. At the heart of the Hurricanes' defense was its linebacking core. This year's defense boasted two outstanding tacklers in Tuan Russell and James Burgess. Both all Big East selections, Russell recorded 125 tackles and Burgess 119, far ahead of the next highest Hurricane defender. And along with contributing 61 tackles, a fumble recovery, and a pass interception, senior linebacker Tony Coley left his mark both on and off the football field. A starter in every game this season, Coley was one of 11 student athletes named to the College Football Association's Good Works team, which recognizes the unselfish efforts of college football players off the playing field. His numerous community activities, as well as his excellence in the classroom, has also earned Coley a spot on the CFA Scholar Athlete Team. Freshman Rod Mack recorded 43 tackles along with two interceptions, and fellow underclassmen Jeffrey Taylor, Michael Smith, and Cliff Jackson also contributed. Senior linebacker Mark Carbone, a former walk-on, saw most of his action as a special teams wedge buster. If the heart of the UM defense was its linebackers, then its soul must be the secondary. The Miami secondary did not allow a passing touchdown until week six versus East Carolina and ranked 21st nationally in pass efficiency defense. 
The UM defensive backfield was loaded with proven veteran performers. At the corners, senior Earl Little with two interceptions and junior Dwayne Starks with three picks each had nine pass breakups to lead the defense in those categories while providing excellent run support as well. Senior Carlos Jones also made significant contributions to the cornerback position. Senior free safety Marcus Wimberly was fifth on the team in tackles and had one interception, as did fellow senior Chris Gibson and junior backup Eugene Ridgely. Junior defensive back Dennis Scott also saw extended action. And for sheer excitement and ability, it's hard to top junior safety Tremaine Mack. Along with his 73 tackles to rank third on the team, T-Mack also recovered two fumbles and picked off two passes. Mack made a name for himself as the Big East Special Teams Player of the Year. Against Temple, Mack established a new Big East and Hurricane single game record with 205 yards on kickoff returns. And despite not returning a kickoff until week six, he shattered Randall Hill's single season kickoff return yardage record by recording 528 yards on 14 returns. Tremaine led the nation with an average of 39.5 yards per return. Mack has also impacted Miami's superb special teams as a kick blocker with 10 blocks over the past two years. Team Mack blocked four kicks this season, including the game winner against West Virginia. In fact, the Hurricanes special teams under coach Butch Davis have blocked or deflected 22 kicks over a span of 23 games. In 1996, UM blocked or deflected 10 kicks that led to six touchdowns. Further evidence of Miami's excellence in special teams lies in the fact that UM opponents missed 10 of 15 field goal attempts this season. Freshman Andy Crossland was 13 of 18 in his field goal tries, and he also became the first Hurricane in 24 years to handle both the place kicking and the punting chores. While sophomore George Gaetan's booming kickoffs helped the kick coverage unit, as a whole, there is little doubt that the play of the Hurricane special teams was a key factor in Miami's success in 1996. Although a loss to Virginia Tech left Miami 4-1 in the Big East, the Hurricanes could still grab a share of the conference championship by winning their final two regular season games. First up was Boston College. The Canes scored early and often, building a 17-0 first quarter lead. The offensive line was impressive, as Miami had a pair of 100-yard rushers in Dyrell McMillan and Edger and James, en route to a season-high team total of 322 yards rushing. And for the first time in history, Miami had a 100-yard receiving effort to go with two 100-yard rushers, as Tony Gator totaled 127 yards in catches. Quarterback Scott Covington, making his first career start in place of the injured Ryan Clement, connected on 22 of 29 passes for 295 yards and three touchdowns, earning him Big East Offensive Player of the Week honors. UM's 617 yards of total offense was the most in more than two years, and Miami never punted in the 43-26 route. The Big East Championship was on the line as the Hurricanes traveled to Syracuse for the season finale against the 16th ranked Orangemen. For the second consecutive week on national television, UM got out to a quick start. Returning to his starting role, quarterback Ryan Clement threw three first half touchdown passes to stake the Canes to an early 21-3 lead. Syracuse cut the lead to 21-10 with 48 seconds remaining in the half. 
but on the ensuing kickoff, UM special teams ace Tremaine Mack became the first Hurricane in 16 years to return a kickoff for a touchdown, putting the Canes up 28 to 10 at the break. Cornerback Dwayne Starks intercepted a pass on Syracuse's first drive of the second half and returned it 35 yards for a touchdown. But Syracuse pulled within 35-24 with 9.55 remaining in the game. The Orangemen were on the move again with their next drive. That is until linebacker Tony Coley caused a fumble that was pounced on by Starks deep in UM territory. For the second consecutive week, a UM quarterback would earn Big East Offensive Player of the Week honors as Ryan Clement finished the game 14 of 28 for 218 yards. And with the 38-31 victory over Syracuse, the Hurricanes captured a share of the Big East Championship and a date with the Virginia Cavaliers in the CarQuest Bowl. Everybody was a factor. Yep. Special teams made huge plays, offense and defense, interceptions, touchdowns. This was a team effort. You got one goal left. Not, no one has done it in five years. And that's a win of all game. Miami's first ever appearance in the CarQuest Bowl also marked the first meeting between the Canes and the Cavs, as well as UM's first game in South Florida's Pro Player Stadium. Right from its opening possession, Miami showed it came to play. Clement will have the tie, fires it deep down the sideline, looking, pass is caught, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Miami! Pass complete for the touchdown, 69 yards to Yatil Green. Ryan Clement's 70-yard touchdown to Yatil Green marked UM's earliest score in bowl competition and gave the Hurricanes a 7-0 lead. Then it was time for Tremaine Mack to ignite his special brand of fireworks. There's a give to Jones. That's, I mean, he got leveled down at the 18. Ball comes free. Picked up by Miami. 35. Play looks like it's still alive. 45-40. 35. Who else? Tremaine Mack. Five. He goes in for the touchdown. Mack's 79-yard fumble return gave Miami an insurmountable 24-7 lead. Tremaine continued his heroics by blocking a third-quarter field goal attempt by the Cavaliers, which solidified his unanimous choice as the Bulls' most valuable player. Ryan Clement led the offense with a career-best 274 yards passing, and Trent Jones' fourth-quarter touchdown sealed the Hurricanes' 31-21 victory. For the first time in five years, Miami ended its season with a bowl triumph. Hard work, conviction, pride, responsibility, class, character, success. These attributes have followed Butch Davis throughout his football coaching career. In his second season at the helm of the Hurricane football program, head coach Butch Davis responded by guiding the Canes to a share of the Big East Championship for the second consecutive year. But far more important to Davis are the results not readily noticed by outside observers. Davis and his staff are totally committed to getting the job done right. The Hurricane players have accepted Davis's firm but fair leadership. And they've learned that placing egos aside, being responsible to yourself and your teammates, making a commitment to academics, and working as a team are the foundations of a successful college football program. Both on the field and in the classroom, the UM football program remains among the nation's elite. Miami is one of just nine Division I schools to receive accolades from the College Football Association for exceeding a 70% graduation rate in each of the last five years. And the program is still one of the most highly visible in the country, with seven of Miami's last eight games in 1996 being shown on national television. For 14 consecutive years, the Hurricanes have finished their season ranked in the Associated Press Top 25 poll, and in 10 of those years, UM finished in the top five. There is little doubt as to the direction of this football program as the University of Miami Hurricanes continue stepping up to the challenge as one of college football's elites.